Okay then, I think we'll make a start. Um, as I introduced myself before, my name is Rachel. I'm the Student Recruitment Manager at the Faculty and today I'm going to be talking about um, FPPSs, that's the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences at Monash, um, our graduate courses. Now, um, if you can hear me, please raise your hand. Otherwise, I'll just be talking, thinking that you can hear me. Um, thank you, Regina. I really appreciate that and everyone else. Um, today is a short session. I should be done in about 20 to 25 minutes. But the main purpose of today is to have any of your questions answered. So if you have any questions at all throughout the presentation, please put them in the Q&A um, and make them public for everyone to see. It just makes things easier um, as it means that people don't ask repeat questions. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, before I make a formal start um, with the information that I have, I'd just like to give an acknowledgement of country. Um, so we acknowledge the, um, or I acknowledge, I would say the people um, of the indigenous peoples of the land that I'm gathered on um, today and that you are standing on as well for our Parkville campus. This is the, Wurund the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. Um, and yeah, I acknowledge um, the traditional custodians of the lands on which we are gathered here today and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, as well as my respects to any Indigenous peoples who may be joining us here today. Okay, so I'm going to start off with some general information about our faculty. Um, and this is probably the question that I spend most of my time answering. And um, that is, you know, you offer pharmacy and pharmaceutical science courses. What's the difference between them? Um, generally people hear one term and associate it with medicines, um, which is correct because medicines are the essence of our field. But depending on the course that you choose, um, you'll be focusing on slightly different aspects of medicine. So starting with pharmacy, pharmacists are the people who help us take the medicines. They're health professionals who are the medicines experts in healthcare teams, and they teach us as patients and also their colleagues, doctors, nurses, about how medicines work in the body so that medicines can be used and taken safely and effectively. So the pharmacy course trains you to become a health professional who is a medicine expert who helps us take medicine. Now, then we have pharmaceutical science and pharmaceutical scientists are the people who help us make medicine. We say that they advance the science of new and existing medicines. Um, and as we're all aware in this current environment, new diseases can emerge all the time and old ones and not so old ones are constantly evolving. And because of this health challenge, we need pharmaceutical scientists um, who are skilled individuals who understand how medicines work in the body, who then can use their knowledge of um, chemistry and biology um, to put together um, medicine recipes and actually create medicinal products at the end of the day. So pharmaceutical scientists again help us make medicines. Now a little bit about our faculty. Um, so you may be aware of Monash University, I hope you are. It's one of Australia's um, top eight ranked universities, a research intensive university. Um, and within Monash um, we have 10 distinct faculties or discipline areas um, of which we are one. And we at the Faculty of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences have a really strong reputation, not only locally, but globally. So maybe most impressively, um, we're ranked second in the world currently, according to the QS World Rankings by subject for pharmacy and pharmacology. And only Oxford University in the UK, we came up with the AstraZeneca vaccine um, rank higher. Now, if you come and study with us, um, we can um, really, I guess, um, promise a very um, engaging, memorable, um, fun, experiential um, experience 
for you that really focuses on things like employability and skills. Um, so we do a lot of research in our discipline in pharmacy, pharmaceutical science and pharmacology, but we also do a lot of research in pharmacy and pharmaceutical science and science education. And we know how to build science-based degree um, that is relevant to the future of your professions, but also makes your learning experience really great. So these are the pillars of both our programs, our graduate programs. Um, you know, you'll be taught in an active learning style. There'll be a great focus on employability from day one. Um, you'll have a lot of time um, to practice what you do either um, in a pharmacy setting or in the lab in real world settings. And you'll also be skills coached. Um, basically, we have a deep commitment to ensuring that you develop personally as an individual, that you're developing the skills you need to succeed in your professions, um, but also personally. Now, again, I do hope you know a little bit about Monash University. So we're located in Melbourne, um, Victoria, which is consistently ranked one of the world's most livable cities. Um, and it is a really welcoming um, place and, and really welcomes a lot of international students every year as well. Um, in Melbourne, um, Monash is the largest university in student population and campus size. And we actually have four campuses across um, Melbourne, mostly located in the southeast. Having said that, we do things a little bit different at our faculty. Um, and we are actually located in the leafy green suburb of Parkville, which is in Melbourne's inner north. This is a photo of our campus here. It's not particularly big, um, but that's because it's single purpose. So we only teach the two disciplines at our campus. And this makes for a really strong community because you know, no matter where in the world you come from, you come to our campus having something already in common with your teachers and your peers. And that is you speak the language of chemistry. This location for a campus is really great. It's really near Melbourne Central Business District. It's part of Melbourne's medical and biotech precinct, which is a world renowned precinct that's dedicated to furthering the science um, of biomedicine. Um, and it's part of Monash. Um, even though, you know, we're a little bit separate geographically, um, we have so many facilities and services for our students at our campus, but you're also more than welcome to plug into wider Monash and use the facilities and services at our larger campuses as well. Now, um, I've already talked a little bit about, you know, the campus and, and student life. I've said it's close to Melbourne CBD and it's highly accessible by public transport. So I would say that, um, you know, no matter where you live in Melbourne, um, you might be connected to the campus in some way by public transport, particularly if you do choose to live um, in Melbourne's inner suburbs. Um, again, we're a small campus, but a strong community. So you'll make friends really easily. Every incoming student gets a peer mentor from day one. That's someone who's just in the year level above you, who's been through the first year of your course and can guide you and give you some tips about how you can study, engage with um, your extracurricular things, um, all that sort of thing. We have quite a number of dedicated clubs and societies located on our campus, mostly um, to do with the profession, but also recreational as well. Um, we have some great study spaces and 24 hour security and we have an international student body of about 30%. And this is just a little map of where we're located. You can see we're up the top here in the big blue circle, very close to the Melbourne Zoo, um, which is really great, accessible by tram and trains and even a future tram line is coming up um, in the not too distant future. Okay, so now that I've given you an introduction to our campus, let's talk a little bit about each of the disciplines. Um, and I guess, again, what makes them distinct from each other, what it is you'll exactly study, the career opportunities and that sort of thing. So starting with pharmacy. So just to take you back, pharmacy is a health profession, the health professionals um, who are pharmacists are the people who um, help us take medicines safely and effectively. And, um, you know, health matters in our world. 
um, are a global challenge um, and they concern many of us, um, most of us in fact, we all have health and we all want to have good health. And most health challenges in the world require medicines for treatment um, and or prevention. And medicines come in so many different forms. Um, so many different types of medicines exist and they may be medicines that you know and have used and they may be emerging medicines, things like um, wearable devices and video games. So um, as a pharmacist, you'll learn all about medicines. You'll discover how they work, how they work in the body and it's your responsibility um, to impart that knowledge that you have to patients so that they can be, um, I guess they can be more mindful and look after their health better. Um, and also to your colleagues, the other health professionals who you have working around you in your healthcare team. Now, um, pharmacy, I think, is a really great course because um, most students enter it with the view of becoming a pharmacist. And in Australia, pharmacy is a registered protected profession, which basically means to practice as a pharmacist, you need to study a pharmacy degree. So not everybody can be a pharmacist. You need to have studied pharmacy um, to become a pharmacist. Um, and, you know, most students come into the course with a view to become a pharmacist, but there are so many other different ways that you can use pharmacy. Um, you know, most pharmacists, again, they would work in direct patient care and community and hospital pharmacy settings, and these are really rewarding careers. But I think particularly as we've seen in the pandemic, there's so many other different things pharmacists can do. You could work for a pharmaceutical company, um, you know, in clinical trials or helping with the development of medicines. You could work in healthcare informatics and government organisations. So there are definitely plenty of pharmacists who were involved in our COVID, who are currently involved, I would say, in our COVID relief efforts, um, not only vaccinating patients, but also, you know, setting up um, the, I guess, the vaccination hubs um, that are all around the country, um, ensuring that the medicines are transported safely and correctly and that they can be used safely and correctly. There's also a whole bunch of pharmacy societies and organisations that you can work for, such as regulatory bodies. So um, ATAGI, who you might have heard of in the news, they're a regulatory body, they decide what type of medicines can be used in Australia and each country has their own regulatory body. Um, and based, also coming off that, um, pharmacy is a global career and a global profession. Every country has its own version of a pharmacist, um, but every country does use medicines differently. So it's a course that you can take overseas. Um, you might have to do some additional study or take some additional exams to register overseas, but um, you, know, you can practice as a pharmacist both in Australia and overseas. Um, Cool. So just um, to also tell you about some pharmacy outcomes, um, they're very good. Um, some, we're really lucky, um, I guess, in terms of pharmacy graduate outcomes. Um, and this data is very widely, um, well, not this data is very widely available, but general pharmacy graduate outcome data is widely available. I think um, in 2020, 95.7% of pharmacists around Australia graduated within four months, sorry, um, get, found employment within four months of graduation. So um, very strong employment outcomes for pharmacists um, in Australia, and I think around the world now, particularly with the situation we're seeing, but particularly with our program um, and our new Bachelor of Pharmacy, Master of Pharmacy, which only had its graduating cohort um, in 2021, we also have some really good outcomes. So the fifth year of the program is a paid internship. Um, all our students who choose to enrol in the master's gain paid internships. Um, by February, I think it was, 74 of them gained hospital internships, which are generally considered quite competitive, and 86 of them gained community internships. We also got some really great feedback um, on our new degree. Um, and students just really enjoyed um, studying pharmacy in the way that we've designed um, it to be studied. Okay, so how does it all work? How um, does graduate entry pharmacy work? How does registration as a pharmacist in Australia work? I will come to grad entry in a minute, but it's probably easiest if you understand how registration as a pharmacist in Australia works first. 
So to register as a pharmacist in Australia, you need to do a minimum of five years of study. Um, that's coming straight out of high school. You need to study for at least five years. That fifth year is always a paid internship, no matter where you study pharmacy at any university in Australia. Um, however, should you come to Monash, we recently revamped our degree so that within that five-year time frame, you're actually getting not just a Bachelor of Pharmacy honours, like every other university, but also a Master's of Pharmacy as well. And you don't miss out on that paid internship. We've just managed to cram a little bit of extra study and a little bit of higher level study within that five-year time frame. Now, you guys are here because you're interested in graduate entry programs. So how does graduate entry pharmacy work? Well, basically, because you guys already have or are working towards um, a relevant undergraduate science degree, that's at least three years in length, um, we basically allow you to get two years credit for the five years of minimum study you need to do. So basically you will, um, I'm gonna to switch to this slide actually, you'll complete your prior relevant undergraduate science degree, and then you'll come into year three of our um, Bachelor of Pharmacy, Master of Pharmacy program, and you'll graduate with two degrees in the three years, still including your paid internship. So just switching back to this slide, I'm not too sure which one should go first really. What happens is when you complete your um, undergraduate degree um, and you get your offer, you'll actually come into the third year, as I said, but just prior to that, you will need to do a summer school. That is six and a half weeks in length. It starts in very early January every year. Um, and it's pretty much full time, so nine to five, and it's quite intense. And there will be assessments throughout summer school that you need to do. But if you successfully pass summer school, another name of which is called Bridge to Practice One, you'll come into year three and you'll do one extra little overload unit called Bridge to Practice Two. These bridging subjects um, basically just really bring you up to speed with the rest of the pharmacy students who have come in from year one. You guys will have the science knowledge, but you won't have as much pharmacy context as we need you to have it. So just by doing those two overload units, you'll be brought straight up to speed. And again, after three years, graduating with two degrees, a Bachelor of Pharmacy Honours, and a Master of Pharmacy. You can see on this slide as well, the types of things that you'll be studying. So you've got your bridging units, then these blue units here from blood, brain and cancers to integrated care, your comprehensive care units. So that's learning about diseases, how they work in the body. Your purple units are all your placements, which are all organized for you by the faculty. Um, your internship is organized by yourself. Um, but with support from Monash. Um, your grey units sort of on the right are uh, about um, research into pharmacy. So you'll get a bit of, taste, of a taste of academia and they're sort of your master's level units. Um, you have a professional practice unit as well that basically um, is the skills coaching I talked about. So pharmacy is a health profession and we need you to be able to confidently take on that identity um, from um, the time when you go out on placement. So that's what that unit's all about. Um, here's some of the skills that you'll run through in skills coaching. Just mindful of the time, I could talk forever. So I'll just um, quickly skip through some of these. You can have an international experience, even as a grad entry student. We offer them to North America, the UK and developing countries. We also have um, a really great profile here from a past um, grad entry student, Maddie Lack. She actually came from a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Commerce double degree at Monash. So um, the, the grad entry cohort is really great. It's quite small and tight knit. You go through a lot together doing summer school um, and you know, basically um, you form a really strong bond, which might be quite different to your undergraduate degree. Um, but the point I was making there is that you're all from different types of programs as well. So a really diverse cohort that forms friends really fast. Okay, 
So um, again, if you have any questions about that, please put them in the Q&A. But for now, I'm going to move on to telling you about pharmaceutical science and our really exciting new Master of Pharmaceutical Science coursework program. But just to take you back, what is PharmSci and why does it matter? So pharmaceutical scientists, people who help us make the medicines. We know diseases can evolve and emerge all the time. Um, and pharmaceutical scientists help solve these health challenges. Um, many students study PharmSci because they want to be involved in um, helping cure um, you know, diseases and find treatments for um, illnesses. But many other students are also attracted to pharmaceutical science because they are attracted to working in um, its allied industries. So the knowledge, skills and instrumentation techniques that pharmaceutical scientists students learn are highly transferable and they can be um, yeah, used in a whole range of industries in which I will get to shortly. Um, speaking of which, um, career opportunities. Um, again, you know, the, the most obvious um, kind of career opportunities that come to mind is you could work in research after your master's, you want, might want to do your PhD and end up um, at a university or a private company or a public company in biomedical research, or you might think you want to work in, say, a pharmaceutical company, I guess that's a, a private or public company um, in research as well. Um, but the reality is, as I said, farm size skills are so transferable. Um, we have so many students that work in industries such as skincare and cosmetics, um, agrochemicals, um, regulatory affairs. So again, that's all about how medicines are used um, within certain populations, um, paints and coatings, food and beverage, anywhere, any industry that requires a deep knowledge of um, chemistry and works to formulate chemical based products um, for consumers, generally in fast moving consumer goods, a pharmaceutical scientist um, can be found has a place. I would also mention that um, international development is a really great, um, I guess, a pathway for pharmaceutical scientists as well. This might be more sort of down the research part, but you know, in developed countries um, where medicine is quite advanced, um, we have certain medicine um, needs. And in developing countries where medicine is less advanced, they have um, different needs. And um, formulating medicines for different environments um, is something that a pharmaceutical scientist um, can work on, which is very rewarding. All right, so what's the program and how does it work? So what is the Master of Pharmaceutical Science? It's a coursework master's degree that aims to create graduates with a really sophisticated knowledge of pharmaceutical science and an advanced skill set that meets the growing needs of pharmaceutical and related industries. Um, you know, the, I think the events of the, the recent events of the past couple of years have really taught governments and countries, um, not just Australia, but all around the world, um, that they need to be prepared um, for health challenges that will emerge um, in the future. And even though, um, you know, the pandemic is um, just one example of that, there will be so many different health challenges um, in our not too distant future. And to that, um, I guess, aim. We need skilled individuals that can work in these sectors um, that help, um, that help uh, I guess, protect um, human health and populations. Now, what exactly um, is, does pharmaceutical science um, entail? Um, if you are a bachelor degree in farm sci, please um, bear with me here. My um, explanation might be a bit sim simplistic, but I do like to go over this for people who don't have a farm sci um, directly related background. So um, pharmaceutical science um, basically involves what's called a drug discovery pipeline, which is the journey of a medicine and a product. And um, that journey has three main stages, which are listed here. So drug discovery, biology, medicinal chemistry and formulation science. Um, DDB sort of comes first. It's all about looking at how disease works in the body and how we can use um, that um, knowledge to treat and cure disease. 
Um, but it does also work sort of in tandem with medicinal chemistry. And medicinal chemists are the people who come up with the chemical recipe for the medicine. So it's all sort of that research um, sort of heavy side. And um, certainly, um, you know, if you are interested in being a biomedical researcher, you may choose to sort of um, focus on one of these areas a little bit later on in your program. Um, then we have formulation science. So formulation science sort of takes the information that um, the biologists and the chemists provide and they basically use it to formulate um, the, the medicine or the product at the end of the day. So that is sort of um, what pharmaceutical science entails specifically in terms of the science. But what will you learn in our degree? So the course is two years in length um, to its fullest extent, but depending on your background, you may be eligible for a one year or a one and a half year program. And the two years is divided into four parts, part A to part D. Part A is really for those students um, who don't have a background in pharmaceutical science, and that is the foundations of farm size. So that's pretty much the drug discovery pipeline that I just described. Um, if you have any other background, science, engineering, um, you will be entering in part A. That's the first semester of year one. Second semester of year one is case studies in pharmaceutical science. So that's understanding the narratives, um, basically looking at some really great um, examples of drug development and discovery over the years, and also the things that we're doing at our very own faculty, which being so highly ranked are actually really exciting projects. Part C is all about um, advanced ph pharmaceutical science. So learning about the instrumentation, using that in a really advanced way, um, you know, I guess learning about, yeah, how you can, I guess, enhance and leverage the use of that instrumentation. Um, you'll also do some career work in that part C of the course. And then your part D is your placement and capstones. It's basically um, a whole semester of placement um, in an industrial or a research setting, depending on what your interest area is. And here are the subjects that you'll particularly study. So again, part A, the drug discovery pipeline, part B, you're learning um, about the, the great stories, I guess, of drug discovery, particularly um, in terms of contemporary drug discovery at our faculty. Part C, it's all about the practical skills and career tools and regulation. And then part D is your extended professional placement. So a question we're getting asked a lot is where you can you go on placement? Um, now, we um, haven't even started this very exciting program yet. So the first um, intake will be semester one, 2020. Um, so the answer to that question is really, we don't really know. However, we do have placements for pharmaceutical science students in our undergraduate degree, and we expect them plus more to be our placement partners in our master's degree. So these are the um, companies that we partner with to place students in our undergraduate degree, um, mostly in terms of um, the industrial side of pharmaceutical science. And as I was saying to you earlier, um, you know, they're not just um, restricted to um, biomedical research companies like AstraZeneca and CSL. Um, there's Asahi, a food and beverage, a beer company, there's Swiss Vitamins, the Australian government, um, for those of you who might be interested in IP and patent law, um, the Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication, for those of you who are interested in nanotechnology and nanomedicines. Um, and there's plenty of, I guess, um, skincare and cosmetic type companies as well, as well as hospitals and other fast moving consumer goods, the FGB, um, they make lots of like cleaning products and things. And I think are um, actually um, basically uh, founded by the first, one of the first pharmacists um, in Melbourne. Now, what do you need to get into the pharmaceutical science degree? These are the entry requirements right here. 
Um, so a background in science, biomed, engineering, or um, sci, and the different entry points correlate to um, the different course that you might come from. Okay, I'm going to wrap up there. Um, but if you have any questions, I'm definitely happy to stick around and answer your questions. Um, you can also contact me or us directly at pharmacy.outreach at monash.edu. Um, it's not too late to apply for the 2022 intake of the Master of Pharmaceutical Science. So the 31st of January is the final cutoff date for STEM 1 2022. If you think you're eligible for STEM 2, you can also apply now. Um, if you think you're eligible for entry level C next year, just hold off a little bit yet. Applications for that haven't quite opened yet. Um, grad entry is well and truly in full swing for 2022. So the next intake will be for next year and applications will open um, in August and close um, in November for international students and December for domestic students. I just realized that I didn't actually run through the entry requirements for graduate entry pharmacy. Um, so you will need a science relevant based undergraduate degree. That's at least three years in length. You'll need to have undertaken high level maths, chemistry, and also physiology, either at tertiary or high school level. And you'll need a 70% average across your whole degree. We have a really great graduate entry website that details this, and it's strongly recommended that you have a look at that one. Um, you can go to monash.edu slash farm on screen and navigate to our courses and graduate entry, because particularly for that course, um, the entry requirements are very strict and quite specific. Um, cool. All right, that's it from me. I can't see any questions in the Q&A, but if you have them, now's the time to ask them. Okay, well, no questions. I think I must have given you maybe all the information, maybe too much information. I'm not too sure. Um, but I will wrap things up here then. Um, again, keep talking at us. Oh, sorry, I've got one question. Oh, thank you, Kamal. That's so nice. I'm so glad you found the presentation um, informative and enjoyable. And look, um, it's so good that I will actually, I'm recording us right now and I will put it up on the website um, shortly as well. So you can revisit it. And we will have multiple other engagement events throughout the year. A little bit more interesting ones as well than just me talking at you guys, but we'll have some panels of graduates, hopefully some current students. Um, and I will, um, if you sign up to our mailing list on our website, I will ensure um, that you get invited to those. Thanks so much guys for um, coming along today um, and all the best. And um, we'll end this session now. Thank you so much, bye.